I had an entire Sunday with nothing to do, so I decided to finish off what was left of my Amanita Muscaria caps. This would be my fifth time taking Amanita. I thought I was prepared. I was very wrong. I had ordered Washington State grade A++ dried caps from a reputable online retailer a few months prior, and my first two experiences were like this. Two medium caps for a nice buzz lasting about six hours, four medium caps for a stronger high lasting 10 hours. And they were quite pleasant, aside from the occasional muscle twitch with a stronger dose. So I decided to try the Latvian grade A plus caps from the same seller. The Latvian caps were not nearly as potent as the Washington's, and I was quite disappointed. Two medium caps did nothing. Four medium caps gave me a slight buzz for about two hours. I decided that I would finish the Latvian caps and the Washington caps at the same time. Four small medium Latvians and four small medium Washingtons, so I was expecting about the same high I had experienced with the four medium Washington caps previously. I'd estimate that this was about half an ounce altogether, maybe 20 grams at most. Note that for all five of my experiences, I ate similar food in similar quantities, a light lunch consisting mostly of grains, like pasta and bread, about 30 minutes before consuming the caps. I experienced no nausea whatsoever, as some others have reported. The caps began to set in at about 1-2 to two hours after consumption, as usual. It started with a feeling of my body getting lighter, then my vision started to be affected and it was difficult to focus on details. The effects increased, as they had previously, for about four hours. At this point my vision was clicking on and off, as if someone was flipping a light switch every second or so. I had experienced this before with the stronger doses of Washington's, but this time it was a bit more intense. It was difficult to focus on the TV, so I decided I would take a nap until my vision returned. There wasn't much else I could do at this point. As I stood up to go to bed, the effect suddenly became much more intense. Instead of a light switch flipping on and off every second, it had become a very rapid strobe. I could barely see where I was walking. Then, the effect changed. Now I was getting a still image smaller than it should be, as if I was looking through binoculars backwards, and it was rapidly zooming towards me. This repeated over and over again with the same image, because I was still staring off into space, increasing in speed with each repetition. Then it felt like I was repeating the same movement over and over again as if time had begun to repeat itself rather than just the image zooming at me. At this point, I felt like I completely lost my mind. I came to the sudden realization that I was in hell. Hell was realizing that your entire life up until that point was nothing but a false memory and that you will continue to experience that moment forever and it will always be fresh. Nothing that I thought I did in life mattered, and it made no difference which choices I made because, ultimately, at some arbitrary and anticlimactic moment, I would realize I was in hell and that I would repeat my life over again from the beginning without this knowledge I had suddenly acquired. I screamed, Oh God! Oh my God, I'm in hell! I'm an atheist, so I don't believe in God or hell or eternity. The horror faded briefly, but it was quickly replaced by something that, to me, was somehow more believable and even more terrifying. This next part is very difficult for me to describe without a diagram, but I'll do my best. I felt like my consciousness floated out of myself and looking down, I could see what I interpreted to be the universe. It was a vertical loop, like a roller coaster track, and I was above it observing the whole thing. It was segmented into pieces with the largest at the bottom and they got progressively smaller as they came to the top, then larger on the other side until they met the bottom again. The very bottom point was my birth and the largest segment was my life as I thought I had experienced it up until now. Each segment was my life again, starting at my birth and ending with the moment I realized I was in hell. The size of each segment corresponded to the speed at which I lived it such that I came around the loop, my life sped up each time I experienced it until I reached the top, then it began to slow down again with each lifetime. 
I had already repeated my life several times, and now I was at the top where I could observe everything. The universe was nothing but my consciousness in this infinite loop. I was the only thing that truly existed, and I was doomed to live out a pointless imaginary life over and over again for all eternity, peeking at a moment of truth, loneliness and sheer terror, then returning to ignorance to repeat the cycle. I began screaming uncontrollably. It goes on like this forever. Oh fuck, it never stops. It goes on forever. This was worse than any nightmare I had ever had. I have no idea how long I continued to scream, but my throat was sore the next day. As if that was not enough. For some reason, I thought I could control what was happening in this moment as it repeated. I felt like I could make things better for myself by choosing to repeat a happy moment over and over again instead of realizing I was doomed for eternity. So I tried to imagine I was doing something fun. It didn't work. It wasn't enough to imagine it. I had to actually do it. Since I believed nothing mattered now and that the outcome would always be the same no matter what I did, I had no fear of death. I was sort of already dead. No concern for the well-being of others, they were just figments of my imagination, and no cares about consequences, there's no such thing as police or prison. So I tried to go outside in an attempt to change things. It took me a while to get the door to my apartment open, but I eventually did. Not before I got so frustrated I threw a bookshelf across the room, however. I felt like I was in a dream now, the single moment was no longer repeating but I still had no grasp of reality. I ran outside, down the stairs, and into the street. Luckily, the speed limit around my apartment complex is only 5 miles per hour, and there are lots of speed bumps, so I was in no danger of being hit and killed. Cars were driving by me. At least one of them honked. I was yelling at drivers. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. I distinctly remember looking one woman straight in the eyes as she slowed down to drive past me. I yelled at her, and she had a look of fear and confusion on her face that I will never forget. I kept running, and for a second I thought I could fly. I leapt into the air and came back down. I decided that this was because I had not mastered the ability to alter the laws of physics yet, but that eventually I would be able to. I wandered around for quite some time lost in the maze of apartment buildings and parking lots. At some point, I walked through a pond that was waist deep. I was talking loudly to myself, stumbling about, soaking wet, and yelling nonsense at the few people I saw. I distinctly remember having the urge to strangle someone just because I could, thinking that it wouldn't matter. Thankfully, I didn't. I climbed on top of someone's car in the parking lot at some point, and while I was up there, I began to think, Oh, maybe I'm not in hell. Maybe I should go home. I eventually found my way back to my apartment, and I immediately called my friend. Am I in hell? I asked. What? Am I in hell? Where are you? In my house. In hell. What are you on, and how much did you take? I don't know. All of it. Whatever was left. I'm coming over, I'll be there in a few minutes. I was fine from that point on. Talking to someone I knew was enough to bring me back to reality. I calmed down and gradually returned to normal again over the course of the next four hours or so. The core effects lasted about 12 hours, but I still feel like curling up into the fetal position when I remember the sound of my own screaming. Remembering all of this, I'm surprised the police never showed up. I was extremely lucky that I was not arrested, killed, or seriously injured. I'm very glad I didn't hurt anyone else either, because I'd never be able to live with myself if I had. I'm not sure I will ever take Amanita again, but at the very least, it will be in smaller doses and never without a sitter just in case. I know now how dangerous it can be. So I wanted a trip, voyage, flight, whatever you want to call it. I'm a 21-year-old college student. Acid and shrooms were things of the past when I heard about DMT brew. 
I researched and read, then researched some more, as I always do, just to make sure. I found a site that sold the ingredients I needed. I picked Syrian brew and Mimosa Hostilis, as they seem to be the easiest to brew. The first time I tried this, I couldn't hold it down, and upchucked all of it before it could settle in. This sucked, as it left me with a sick feeling for the rest of the night. Third time was a charm, since I added some jello, which takes out the fats that upset my stomach. I boiled two grams of Syrian brew for about an hour in water with some vinegar. I ended up with a piss yellow brew that was easy to get down. Waited about 20 minutes until I felt it kick in. Light was sensitive to the eyes and very slight movement when concentrating on a certain object. Then I began gulping down the mimosa hostilis tea with about two grams of Syrian brew and chasing with some peach juice. This was about the hardest thing for me to ever get down. It tasted so bad. After getting all of it down over about 15 minutes, the nausea began to kick in again. I ran to the bathroom a few times but held it down. I loaded a bowl and smoked some marijuana to help with this, then put in a movie and waited about an hour and a half. 9.07 p.m. It hit me like a flip of a switch. The floor began moving underneath my coffee table. I looked over at my girlfriend as her face had translucent patterns and tribal markings spinning and rotating on her face. Her irises were changing colors and spinning in the opposite direction of the patterns on her face. Her hair spiked up into the air and grew tall right before my eyes. She no longer was my girlfriend, but the spiritual shaman that was introducing me into this world. The walls were breathing all around me, and it was hard to focus on anything. I got up and went across the room to my computer. I attempted to look for a song in my mind, but the titles and artists were changing sizes and coming in and out of the screen. It was impossible to focus and remember what I was doing at all. I went back to the kitchen and tried to converse with my lover. About 10.15 p.m., my girlfriend, who was sober, gave up on me by this time. I guess I didn't make any sense and I told her that I could no longer look at her because the shaman kept coming back and showing himself to me. I began getting very, very cold, shaking like I was outside in the snow for hours. At about 10.30 p.m., my lover was no longer stoned and falling asleep very fast. Like when I started to trip at a flip of a switch, I didn't feel good at all. I simply felt horrible, not seeing anything only the horrible cold feeling coming from within my soul. I made a trip to the bathroom and puked some bile and dry heaved the rest of the time for a few minutes. One of the saliva clumps formed into a lizard and swam across the toilet water then disappeared into a thousand particles. I remember having to really make my body get up and move into the other room or I would have been stuck there forever. I lay down and started to calm down, closing my eyes. The next thing I remember is that I couldn't fall asleep because if I did, I would never be able to wake up. A Tim Burton clay creature with ten long hind legs, striped with black and white, crawled into my mind and laughed at me. He was a disgusting evil creature with green light shining out of every orifice of his head. He was bruised and had sores throughout his entire body. He crawled like the exorcist girl crawled down the staircase, unnatural and disjointed. I knew at this point that I wanted to be normal. Would I ever be normal again, I asked myself. He crawled around showing me my family and how I was to be. A schizophrenic zombie, a waste to society, a waste to the meaning and value of life. I looked at the clock and it read 10.47. Only a few minutes have passed and I knew I had many hours to go. I began trying to change my pathway of thinking, staring straight at the wall ahead of me letting go and taking the voyage I had been desiring. After dry heaving and returning to my bed once again, I felt normal. I thought to myself that I most likely just came through the second wave of my trip. I decided not to stare at the wall, afraid of what was to come next, and I put in the movie Obsessed. It was about 11.15 by now. A few minutes into the movie, I felt it coming back. At this point I was telling myself over and over just to write it out and that time is on your side. I was back in complete darkness, feeling absolutely crazy. I don't know how to explain it, 
I didn't see or envision anything, but darkness and loneliness overtook me. I felt the creature that kept haunting me close by, so I stared at the movie and wondered if I would ever feel the same again. 12.26 am. I felt paralyzed. I didn't want to move nor did it seem like I could. My eyes no longer could make anything out. Everything around me was blurry and when I closed them the darkness slowly approached me again. My girlfriend stretched out her leg and met with the side of my body. I was in a jungle with her now. We were traveling through the lands, looking and searching for something. This was like watching a movie in my head. As we continued through the vast scenery, I followed my lover into a clearing with a very soft fire. No flame, just smoke but still going if that makes any sense. There were some eyes in the trees looking at us. Out of nowhere a baby is lifted up by the gentle smoking fire and there is a celebration within my body, within the clearing. I no longer feel the darkness I mentioned before. Just as the darkness leaves, the Tim Burton creature again crawled out in view. The jungle disappeared and blackness came around me, almost as if he reminded me who was in charge and how I should feel. The horrible dark feeling came over me again, feeling sick and heading to the toilet. I must have been in the bathroom for some time or must have blacked out, because the next thing I remember I was on the bed, paralyzed again, feeling very lonely and very uncomfortable. I turned and looked at the clock and it read, two, I couldn't read it. I felt it come back. At this point I was getting used to the shuffled mindset, feeling absolutely crazy. My movements were uncontrolled, jerking my head all around every direction I wanted to look. I am surprised I didn't give myself whiplash. My eyes then focused on my cat, Luna. She is a long-haired black cat with some white. I reached out to pet her as she laid on the foot of the bed. Her coat was ashy and gray, ashes floating off into the air as I pet her. She looked so old it freaked me out a bit. And then the sickness hitting me again. I was so tired of throwing up and just wanted this voyage to be over. 3.30 a.m. After throwing up for the last time, I returned to my bed and noticed some color changes in the movie that had started over by this time. I looked at the clock and it read 3.17. I knew that I was finally starting to come down. Although the dark, lonely feeling continued, it was not as intense. I turned off the television and rolled on my back looking at the ceiling for some time. It was almost 5 a.m. now. I was sane enough to go to sleep. I closed my eyes and tried to put all the things I experienced in my memory so I could share them in the morning. I woke up about 7.15 a.m. and was still high but not tripping at all. I was so glad I was back in the world I am used to. Conclusion this was by far the most intense trip I have ever had. I didn't feel in control at times and frankly fucking crazy. I believe that Mimosa Hostilis is not a good vine and will never journey with it again. I have heard that Copy and Veritas Vine is generally a much more pleasant experience. Myself and a friend of mine recently decided to experience Amanita muscaria, so we placed an order and both consumed around 10 grams each. Roughly an hour and a half later I began having a very pleasant mellow trip. It seemed more relaxed than any other hallucinogen I have ever done, because I was able to think and speak much more clearly than LSD which can sometimes overwhelm me and leave me speechless. But the Amanitas did not and I really enjoyed the trip until I decided to smoke some salvia. I loaded a full bowl in my water bong and took two deep hits and held them in for a while. About five seconds later my mind began racing out of control. The first thing that crossed my mind was, this is never going to end. I stumbled to my quiet dark room to try and get control of my head, but as soon as I laid down my mind, and there's no other way to describe it, got caught in a loop of thought so all I could do was think about the same thing over and over again. My mind was caught in a loop and I thought I would be forced to think the same thing over and over again for the rest of my life. It took me into a whole other reality where I had no control over my body or mind. 
It was like being caught in a waking dream that basically caused me to go completely catatonic. Nobody could get through to me. This went down at around 11.30 p.m. My roommate went to bed around 1 a.m., and when he went to sleep I was sitting on the couch with a blank stare on my face, lost in the recesses of my mind. When my roommate woke up around noon the next day, I was sitting in the same place with my eyes wide open and still totally unreachable. The only reason I can relay this is because this is what I was told. I have no memory from right after I took those two hits till about 6 p.m. the following day. As I started coming around about 5 p.m. the next day, I started feeling terrified all over again because I was stuck in between two realities and I felt like I was moving through time differently than everybody else. I started coming out of the haze totally confused and oblivious to what the fuck happened for the last 20 hours of my life. All I remember is thinking I had figured out something very profound, like a simple truth that would explain everything in life but I couldn't think of anything else. It was hell. Eventually I tried to sleep but I would lay down and 10 minutes would pass but it would feel like I was awake for hours. At one point I came out of my room and asked my roommates how long I have been asleep. I thought it was the next day. He replied it was only 10 minutes. So I decided to do what I should have done the night before but couldn't and that's pop some Xanax. Usually two footballs put me out but... It took eight of them to finally put me to sleep. As soon as the Xanax kicked in, I started feeling normal again, but I felt mentally shattered. I had no clue what caused this catastrophe. I felt like I was on the brink of insanity when I was coming round. I realized my own mortality very quickly. The best explanation I can come up with, and I would like help if anybody knows, is that the salvia was magnified tenfold by the Amanita Muscara, because very high doses of salvinorin A took people totally out of reality. But for 20 hours, and only two puffs of salvia. Whatever did it, beware to all. Nobody should have to go through that. If anybody knows why a bomb went off in my head when combining salvia and muscarius, please reply in a comment below. This was the most profound and shitty experience of my life. I do not recommend anyone to drink 500 milliliters of straight absinthe. This was a very stupid idea, and I can't really remember drinking it. My story really began when I woke up on a grim Saturday morning full of cuts and bruises and a wicked headache. I had no idea what had happened except for the first few shots I had with my good friend who brought back a bottle of absinthe from Spain. I had to phone him. No answer. I continued to phone around and hope that someone may have some if not all of the story. I managed to gather information that I had wandered over to my local pub with my mate who was also drinking the absinthe. Apparently I made a complete fool of myself, shouting and swearing and wanting to fight a very large group of steroid abusers. And this was not my nature at all. Make love, not war, I have always said. I'm usually a quiet person who just enjoys a smoke and a few mushrooms now and then. But that stuff changed me in a way that I now see why Vincent Van Gogh cut off his ear. Because he was drinking that devilish stuff excessively, and I was in such a state that I probably would have myself. My mother apparently found me outside my back door with my trousers around my ankle, headbutting the door and cursing everything under the sun. And no mother wants to see their 17-year-old son in such a mess, trying to make snow angels on wet grass in the pouring down rain. But the next day, something started coming back to me. Very hazy memories of tripping my face off. This was stronger than any acid I have taken before. I completely lost all control of my mind and body, and I don't think the steroid boys are happy with me at all. But never mind them, they're just another brick in the wall. I had no idea absinthe was so weird. After just a few shots, it became perfectly articulate and clear and happy. And when the bottle was emptied by just two of us, then I became a gibbering moron with no logic or self-control. As for my friend, he was found outside the pub on a bench and taken to the hospital. We're both okay now, 
but I still feel like I've shamed myself for no reason. I began the night of my trip with no intention on taking this substance that night. My boyfriend and I had acquired some cocaine and were intending on using that all night. We both encephalated three lines of coke. One hour prior to ingestion, very little effects from the coke, we figured we got a bad batch. We were bummed but encephalated two more lines. Dosing, we were both bummed about the coke, we were a bit jittery, but no euphoria or other noticeable effects and so we decided we'd trip instead. We both took three blotters, totaling 450 milligrams, and chewed them for about a half an hour. The taste was no worse than any other blotters, but the aftertaste lingered for days. I swore I was still tasting acid a week after this. This was my first experience with ALLAD, and had heard it was much less intense than the ETH LAD, which I had no problems with at 300 milligrams so I thought 450 milligrams would be appropriate dosing. 15 minutes in, some jitteriness and boosted energy, but no noticeable visions or hallucinations yet. 30 minutes, definitely feeling a lot of boosted energy and we decided to go for a walk. Colors are brighter now and the yellows and reds of being indoors is irritating me. Walking outside into the night immediately gets rid of the irritation. 45 minutes, some enlightened mood at this point. The world is beginning to distort as colors merge with one another and twist. Less colorful than ETH LAD and more geometric patterns. One hour. I began getting a bad stomach ache at this point. It was a mixture of feeling like I had to vomit and feeling like I had to poop really bad. I often vomit when taking psychedelics, but I'd never had a stomach ache this bad without intense nausea to accompany it. We head back to the apartment at this point so I could use the bathroom. Lots of intense colors, and my mind is starting to float as I lose some grasp of logic. 1 hour 15. My stomach ache is intense at this point. I can describe it as nothing else than the feeling that there was a knife stabbing me inside my own body. I feel like my digestive tract was filled end to end with intense pressuring diarrhea that would not come out as hard as I strained. It felt like there was a knife inside me, constantly stabbing. One hour and thirty minutes. I try and take my mind off my stomach, as difficult as it is. My mind is starting to truly float away now, and I'm having difficulty understanding anything my boyfriend is trying to say. I'm having a lot of anxiety because my stomach is in incredible pain, and I don't understand much of what's going on at all. The visions were still incredibly geometric still, but I wasn't focused much on them because of everything else. The visions were much prettier on ETH LAD, where there was much more bursting color than geometrics. I tell my boyfriend I need some space and walk out on the deck. I smoke some weed out of my pipe because I thought it might help my stomach. I occasionally smoke to help stomach aches in the past, and I was hoping it might put me in a more familiar state of mind. I was much more calm at the end of this time and it would be the last moment of sanity I'd have for the rest of the night. Two hours. I've gradually lost control of understanding of the entire world. I cannot comprehend time at all and began obsessing over how long the trip would last, as I can't comprehend well that the trip would eventually subside. Imagine sanity as a woven fabric, with small fibers creating strings, which are woven into threads, which are woven into a fabric, and each tiny fiber is a neuron in your brain that helps you identify the next fiber and thus interact with the entire plane of fabric around you and understand it. If sanity was a woven fabric, during this time, each of the tiniest fibers that made up the fabric of my sanity was unraveled and expelled in every direction away from each other. I couldn't understand how one thing interacted with another. I couldn't understand how to function, and I began to panic. 2 hours and 15 minutes. I tell my boyfriend I really want to call 911 right now and I'm having a panic attack and my stomach is in incredible pain. I'm terrified at this moment. He tries to calm me down and tells me to take a shower and maybe it would help. I step into the shower for maybe 20 seconds before the true panic, the terrified panic sets in. 
I tell him to call an ambulance right now or else I will go into his apartment hallway and beg someone else to call. He tells me I just need to calm down or else we'll both get into trouble. At this point, I don't know what's real and what wasn't because my boyfriend insists some of the things that followed here did not happen. I remember running to my phone so I could call an ambulance myself, but he grabbed my phone and wouldn't let me call. I'm begging him to give me my phone or call. I couldn't understand his words now, so I don't know why he didn't. I run for his apartment door to get help, but he grabs me, picks me up, and pins me down. I literally think my boyfriend is trying to kill me right now, and I'm screaming, This is how I'm going to die! This is how I'm going to die! Two hours and thirty minutes. After getting free of my boyfriend, I run into the hallway and scream, I need help! I need help! Of course, some people pop their heads out. This is a long, long hallway, and this made the trip worse. I felt like it was an infinite hallway that never ended. My mind started fixating on infinity. My long lost sense of time fully turned off, and it was some time in this phase that I was convinced that I had already died at some point earlier in the trip, and this was hell. I would be stuck in this hell forever. I thought I would be trapped in my hallucinating mind for all of eternity. Since I was already dead in my mind, I just said fuck it and started acting completely bonkers. My I need help turned into me running up and down the hallway begging for someone to shoot me, screaming, I've gone insane! I've gone insane! Please someone get a gun! Three hours plus. I'm not sure when this part happened as it feels like literal years before the cops showed up. I think I was in the hallway about 20 to 30 minutes before they got there but I can't be sure. I didn't get handcuffed, but I literally brawled with the cops in any capacity that a 140 pound girl can trying to get away. They hold me in custody until the ambulance arrive. After the brawl, I sit down in a chair nearby and put my hands behind my head. This was a moment of calm for me, of beautiful colors, and of everything a trip should be. No anxiety, but alone with beautiful colors and intense imagination capabilities. If only four cops weren't there too, it would have been so nice in that moment. Three hours and fifteen minutes, I start going crazy again in the ambulance and again begging them to shoot me. I start thinking my eternity is going to be a series of rooms or episodes in which I cannot escape, but rather I'd be taken from episode to episode whenever the demons around me allow me. The first episode was the hallway, then the room with the cops, then the ambulance. I hallucinated that one of the paramedics had a gun and I grabbed for it. 3 minutes and 45. When I arrive at the hospital, they pump me with Valium and I immediately feel much better. I still have a hard time understanding people and what's going on, but now I realize I'm not trapped in an eternal hell. My reactions are very slow to people's questions. The visuals are still very present, and the hospital room is warped, but it's dark, so it's calming. 4 hours and 15 minutes. I pretty much called the trip over at this point. The visuals were still present, but the confusion and mindfuck had gone. It was at this point that the doctors told me that when I came in that my heart rate was at 210 beats per minute, and said had I not come to the hospital, that I could have very easily had a heart attack. The blood flowing in my eternal organs was also incredibly restricted and could have caused organ failure had they not pumped me with something to ease blood flow and decrease restriction. The official diagnosis was polysubstance abuse, but I'm not sure. Would I have had the same reaction without the cocaine and weed? I really can't be sure. Aftermath I was still seeing visuals for almost a full 12 hours after dosing. I was worried I might have gotten HPPD since that can often happen after a bad trip. I think I do have mild HPPD, as any substance I take, even alcohol and weed, the world now is a bit more colorful than it used to be. It's been 5 months now. Light is very irritating if I'm not intoxicated now. Overall, I'm just glad I didn't get arrested. I do have a very bad phobia with long hallways now and have previously gone into a trance in long hallways where I was temporarily disoriented and very anxious. It could be PTSD, but I'm not sure. It'll be a very long time, if ever, 
I take psychedelics again, and if I do, I'm going to have Xanax on hand.